is also about adjusting our attitude. Uh, usually we don't see anger as pain. Now I'm asking you to look at anger as pain. As pain. If somebody is angry with you, maybe your boss is angry with you, now I'm trying to adjust your attitude. Try to see your boss as suffering from pain. The pain of anger. <laughs> because he's more powerful, because he has more authority at work, it doesn't mean he has no suffering. If he doesn't suffer, if he is not in pain, he is not able to cause you pain. As simple as that. So to relate to his pain is very important. If you can't relate to his pain, there is a war between you and your boss. Both of you, you are talking to the, the war. You are not talking to each other. You are talking to bricks. You are not talking to human beings. So it's important to try to find pain and relate to that pain. If somebody doesn't behave nice to you, and try to relate to this person's pain, at first it's a little bit difficult, but it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. is one of the easiest things I have ever done. And I have seen people doing. I have been going to Spain for 10 years, Hungary for 10 years, uh, Serbia for the last 6 years. Uh, I share this with them. People come with anger, with uh, a sense of injustice, uh, grievances. So, The person you're angry with is not even aware of your anger. You're angry about the person, but the person is on holiday somewhere. (laughs) And you're torturing yourself. You're torturing yourself. So, compassion is the best way to let go. If you make a mistake, then you need to um, connect with your own pain. And to connect with this pain non-judgmentally, without adding good or bad value judgment. Just try to be with the pain, not judging it, not describing it. I usually use the word stare at the pain, but don't describe it. Just to simply stare at the pain, be in touch with the pain. (coughs) A friend of mine, a Catholic, uh, he told me that he can't forgive his brother uh, for over two decades. And how does forgiveness work in Buddhism? Can you help me? I have prayed to God many times. He said, you know, I have not been granted forgiveness. My prayer has not been answered. Well, I said, in Buddhism, forgiveness is a byproduct. It's a buying product of um, managing anger. If we can manage our anger, if we can relate to the pain of anger, then forgiveness comes automatically as a buying product. If you are um, results oriented towards forgiveness and you're trying to get forgiveness and forgiveness alone, 
not thinking about associated problems. Now you're working like a businessman, trying to get you know, one thing and ignoring all the others. We are in pain in one way or another all the time. All the time. If you sit here for one hour, you're going to be in pain because you feel thirsty physically. Then you need to drink. After you have had a drink, then you have to go to the loo. If you don't do that physically, you're going to suffer. Your kidney and, and not only that psychologically, that will have an impact. Just trying to relate to that. You can relate to everyone's pain. Every six or seven hours we have to eat. And <clears throat> when we are hungry, we cannot eat. What happens? You know, we feel restless. The body suffers. The mind also suffers. If you can relate to that, you can also relate to everyone. But we are not going to start with this. This, um, this, um, this kind of ordinary pain is very important, but not many people can uh, relate to that. So we have to try to relate to special pain first so-called special pain. Special pain in your life. If you have been betrayed, if you have been cheated on, um, if you have been uh, slandered and gossiped about, if you have been, uh, if you have had uh, someone okay, jealous of you, If you have someone trying to talk you down, uh, for whatever reason, okay, now it's time to try to, to connect with your pain first. When you try to connect with your pain, you're going to see how the mind is going to behave. The mind is going to behave in one of the two ways, one of the two extremes. Either to blame the person or to blame yourself. But if you can get in touch with that automatic reaction, blaming others and blaming yourself, uh, get in touch with that, recognize that, register that, let go, and return to breathing, trying to settle down, trying to calm yourself down. And then, Go back to the pain again. It may be any um, disappointment that you have that you have experienced in your life. I try to revisit the scenario, try to visualize that, and try to observe that pain, that emotion. It's almost you know, digging up the old emotion is about revisiting the past also is about reconciling with the past you know in Buddhist um, enlightenment what we call enlightenment we are not talking about European enlightenment of the 18th century we are talking about the 2600 years understanding of enlightenment. Enlightenment in Buddhism, the first one is you have to have, you have to you know, have reconciled with your past. Ubeni was in the city. All the emotions that you have, they are all linked to the past. And with that emotional experience, Bitterness, 
the insecurity, the fear, the worry, the anxiety, all those emotions, we project to the future. We create a future reflected in the past. So we have no time to live the present moment. This is because we ignore the past. So I'm saying in this session, we are going to revisit some of our past experiences, the painful ones. A couple from London uh, were on holiday in Mallorca in Spain. And one day they came to the session with me like this. I asked them to, uh, to try to relate to pain. And to turn that pain, transform that pain into compassion. And they said, wow, in Mallorca, the taxi driver cheated us. It cost only 50 euro. And he pressed the button twice so it became 100. So we knew he cheated us 50 pounds that we had, don't speak Spanish, so we just pay. And they are bitter, bitter about that. And they said, you know, why should we do meta for this taxi driver? He's a cheat. Every time they think about that, they are bitter. That bitterness costs them more than 50 euros. <laughs> when I was a student, you know, before we set up the um, monastery in Oxford, one day I was invited to Korea. So, um, from my hostel, okay, I was about to go to Heathrow, and I took a cab as well. And um, it was only six pounds and fifty. And then the taxi driver twice, so thirteen pounds. I paid thirteen pounds. And on, on the coach to Heathrow, I was observing my emotion. Because that any negative emotion could cost me more. Thirteen pounds, okay, is is possible to measure that to uh, replace that. But emotional damage, if I develop distrust towards taxi drivers, what would happen? That distrust would be passed on to other people, even to my brothers and sisters, to my loved ones. That would be very costly. So, <clears throat> the first thing I did was to try to connect with the pain, the pain of that type of taxi driver. That he has had to behave that way. That he had that habit, because that habit is not going to spare him some time. Now, he has a Buddhist monk as a passenger. <laughs> no. and, and, and I was in a rush, so I didn't have time to, to argue with him. <clears throat> Whenever we come across pain, emotional pain, for example, anger, uh, irritation, disappointment. Whenever we come across that, we are always at a crossroads. At a crossroad, you only you can only choose one way: left or right. Sometimes people call that T junction. You you can only choose one. One is bitterness, negative emotion. 
The other is compassion. Anger, bitterness, all the negative emotions, they drain you. They drain you physically, psychologically. When you are angry, your mind is going to register only negative things in the world. You come into this room, you wouldn't see how much effort has gone into making this room available. <coughs> you wouldn't see that. Maybe <coughs> you're going to see, you know, one little, little um, inconvenience. And your mind straight away enlarges that. It's a suffering creating habit. A habit that creates suffering. So it's important to try to connect with that energy, the energy of pain, the energy that is in pain. Because it can turn into anger, it can turn into um, needless uh, criticism, just for its own sake. It can turn into um, anxiety, insecure feeling, worry. All the negative emotion. But if we can connect with those energies and we can use mindfulness to turn them into compassion, compassion is a positive energy. It's a positive energy. Today in the West, we have positive psychology. No, very recent. Very recent. Before that, until 2000, from around 60 to 2000, something like that, a professor from Harvard University um, did a literature review on the literature of psychology. He found that for every 21 books and uh, articles, publication on negative psychology, there's only one positive. The ratio is 21 to 1. If you translate this to the way we live, okay, you are happy just for one day every three weeks. One year, only when you become 21. You are happy just for two years when you are 42. So even psychology has problems. We are negative bias and, and the reason we do that is we are not aware that we are at a crossroads. And we allow ourselves to be dragged to the negative side, to the downhill side. And we don't make any attempt to choose compassion. Compassion, look at the mother, the Buddha gives an example of the mother with only one child. The mother has all the patience in the world. <clears throat> These are the papers in my hand. If I throw them away, and my assistant would uh, pick them up and give them back to me. I throw them again, they will pick them up again to me. More than two or three times, they won't do that anymore. They would run out of their patience. But the mother, okay, is very patient. 
look at how the child makes the mess at home. The mother is very patient. That love, that compassion is what the Buddha makes an example. Uses an example. Only at one time. That means when you're angry, your anger is the only one and only child at that moment. You have to give full attention to this. I mentioned earlier in psychology, education of attention. Skillful attention. When you pay attention, if you're not skillful, you're creating suffering for yourself, misery to yourself. You see somebody say, you have somebody saying something nasty to you at work, and you come home, you create more and more. You play that scenario again and again. You're unable to let go. Because the mind is not skillful. The mind doesn't have a skill. So compassion is a skill. But in Pali, skill is called kusala. Kuto in terms kusala. Skill. Happiness is a skill. Compassion is a skill. Letting go is a skill. To get angry, you don't really need any skill. So unskillful mind is called akusana. Unskillful. <clears throat> um, Sometimes I work with uh, young children. I ask, I work with boys uh, who play football. In England they like football. <clears throat> Okay, when you lose a football match, how do you feel? Okay, trying to look into your mind and acknowledge that feeling. Slow and deep breathing and acknowledging that feeling. And then you look at your friends in the same time, your best friends, how they feel because they also lose. They lose the match. Now the child is extending his uh, connection with pain. Not just his own pain, but connecting the pain of his friend as well. And another friend, and another friend. Then <coughs> look at <coughs> a football match. A neutral, two neutral teams where you are not a fan of, of, of uh, either of them. When they lose, how do you feel? You don't feel anything. But how they would feel? Then try a little bit harder to connect with that pain. If you can connect with that pain, and now try to connect with your opponent's pain when they lose. Because usually when your opponent loses, you just jump and dance. <laughs> Now, instead of doing that, you know, can we just connect with that pain? Because this requires, you know, a very advanced skill. <coughs> Kusala. If you can connect with the pain of somebody who hurts you, you are well protected. This person will never be able to hurt you again. Whatever he says, you won't be shaken again. Because your attitude is right, you see that he is in pain. And this attitude is very important. <clears throat> you see, <clears throat> um, the Buddha was able to <coughs> to forgive people <coughs> because um, he looked at pain in the right way. It's called right view, samadhi, right view. 
The Buddha said pain uh, is impersonal. That pain can happen to anyone. And when we personalize pain, we do so because we feel insecure. We identify with pain and we present ourselves as a victim, as having done injustice, having been done injustice, having received injustice you know, from someone. And, and uh, we want this to be addressed. It's okay at the institutional level that we need to address justice and all that. But at the emotional level, if we cannot turn this into compassion, all our actions are going to be destructive. They are going to be destructive. They are going towards punishment, going towards revenge, all very destructive. And that will feed the um, uh, vicious circle. So in this session, what I would like to um, to suggest that we are going to do is <coughs> to try to connect with our pain, first our own pain. When we connect with our pain, trying to see if there's any automatic reaction, like blaming, um, any reaction at all. If there's any reaction, then just keep in touch with that emotion, like what we did in the first session. But also, try to see the physical manifestation as we did in the second session. Slow and deep breathing. And then go back to the pain again. Try to connect with the pain. What I'm saying pain here is emotional pain, physical pain, any pain. So first is your own pain. If you can, cannot connect with the pain in one situation, then try to change another situation, try to visualize another past experience and try to um, connect with pain. The second one, try to connect with the pain of your loved ones in the family, one by one. Try to connect with their pain. You're going to see whether you can do that. If you can't do that, you're going to see why. Sometimes because of lack of uh, practice, or sometimes because you know you have certain attitudes that is blocking, uh, blocking you from connecting with the pain. So your also is the first one, the second one is family members, the third one is your friends. Choose one or two friends, try to connect with that pain, without judging. Without judging. Something that makes them suffer or unhappy, agitated, angry, restless, whatever. And the fourth one is your colleagues, at work or in the society. And the last one, a person you don't like or the person who doesn't like you, trying to connect with that person's pain. Remember, anyone who is angry is in pain, who is jealous is in pain, who feels insecure is in pain. Those are emotional pain. So if you look at them as pain as pain, pain as pain, you see pain as pain, you are having the right attitude, right view. And that's the basis for compassion. So once you are connected with that pain, with your own pain, 
Stay with that pain. Feel that pain. And in the end, tell yourself, may I be free from this pain. The same with your loved ones. After you have um, felt that pain, that may you be free from this pain. Simply wish them that. Up to number five, the person you think doesn't like you or you don't like that person. Try to connect with that pain and wish them to be free from that pain. Fifteen minutes. <laughs>